watching. Hi there. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you, um, how was, how was your weekend, Guillermo? Do you have a good weekend? Oh, good, good. Yeah, good, and not anything interesting happened? Uh, no, 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 nothing, yeah. <laughs> My wife and I went to Las Vegas this weekend. You know, you can get really good rates at the Trump Hotel nowadays. It's... <laughs> Donald Trump did something miraculous this weekend. He filed a financial disclosure report. You know those things you're, you have to file when you're running for office? He actually filed one. He did it at the last minute. He did it after a number of warnings and extensions, but he did do it, and we gathered some interesting information from that filing, including the fact that Trump got $5 million from a deal with a Saudi developer and the Omani government to build a golf resort in Oman, which makes sense in case he has to flee there someday. He also... <laughs> earn millions from something called CIC Ventures, which CIC stands for Commander-in-Chief Ventures. This is the entity that handles the money he makes from uh, live performances and rally events. You know he makes money from those. People paid between fifty dollars and $4,000 to hear him ranting and raving about witch hunts and regulation. Like, he basically sells tickets to Drama Queen Story Hour. And he's also <laughs> collecting a six-figure annual pension from the actors' union, SAG-AFTRA, the guy who hates Hollywood is on the same retirement plan as Vanessa from The Cosby Show. <laughs> and you remember those Trump NFTs? These, uh, well, the hucksters who made them, they predicted $100 million in sales. So far, according to Trump, they've only sold $6 million, which surprises me because they're so great. <laughs> There's also a big new income stream from Melania Trump, who made between $1 and $5 million from her deal with the right-wing social media platform, Parler. You know things are bad at home when you own a conservative social media company and your wife's main source of income is the other conservative social media company. <laughs> Trump made, and at first I thought this was a typo, but it isn't. He says he made $201 from Truth Social. Not $201 million or $201,000, 201, like less than he would have made if he started a lemonade stand outside Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> You know, he's constantly bragging about how well Truth Social is performing. And, well, you're not going to believe this. It turns out that's not actually true. According to a company <laughs> that independently measures web traffic, his website right now is the 10,953rd most visited site in the world. Give you some context. That is behind, first of all, the other social media sites. Facebook's the number three most visited in the world. Twitter is number five. Reddit is number 19. Truth Social, not only is it far behind its competitors, <laughs> It's more than a thousand spots behind Arby's.com. Okay, it's enough. It's over five thousand spots behind his other favorite website, KFC.com, and almost eight thousand spots behind WikiFeet, a foot fetish website, is much more popular than Truth Social. And this has got to be a real shot to the gut. Trump's feet on WikiFeet, they're only rated 1.2 out of five stars. It's just sad, it's sad. His feet have a lower approval rating than his presidency. Let's have a look at those feet, by the way, because, uh, yeah, yeah, look at those chubby little piggies. No wonder he couldn't serve in the military. He's got feet like a giant baby. In Delaware today uh, was supposed to be day one of this huge defamation trial filed by Dominion Voting Systems against Fox News, but it got pushed until tomorrow. I guess the judge needed some time to get over missing the Love is Blind reunion last night, but <laughs> Dominion, which makes the voting machines, is suing Fox for $1.6 billion for falsely accusing them of election fraud. Fox is in a very difficult position right now. The judge has already ruled that it's so obvious Fox lied to its audience that Dominion doesn't even have to prove that to the jury. All they have to prove is that Fox lied knowingly or with reckless disregard for the truth, which is, of course they did. That's their business model. Of course they did that. But there are dozens of text messages in which Fox executives and hosts openly talk about how dumb Trump's lawyers are. And Trump, the brilliant legal mind that he is, this morning jammed on the all caps button to advise if Fox would finally admit that there was large scale cheating and irregularities in the election, which would be a good thing for them and for America, the case against them, which should not have existed at all, would be greatly weakened. Back up those patriots at Fox instead of throwing them under the bus. And they are right. There is so much proof. The extra O's really sell it. 
So much proof, like mass ballot stuffing, caught on cameras, FBI colluding with Twitter and Facebook, state legislatures not used, et cetera. In other words, you know all that stuff you're being sued for a billion and a half dollars for saying on TV? Say it again. Give them another billion and a half dollars. Great idea. What a play. This is like if OJ tried on the glove and then turned around and killed Johnny Cochran with it. Okay? That's how much sense it makes. So, um, anyway, in Indianapolis this weekend, Yosemite Scam was at the NRA convention where, once again, he had all the best words and ideas. For about $12 billion, we could fund armed security guards at the entrance to every school in America and also arm every willing teacher. We want to arm some of these teachers. They have to go through rigorous, or as some people say, vigorous. I like vigorous better. I don't like rigorous. They have to go through vigorous training, but they're already there. And they'll do better than anybody you could put in. And they love our children. They really love our children. And take it from a guy who does not love his children. They love <laughs> our children. He's so dumb. He's, I mean, first of all, the word is rigorous, not vigorous, OK? Uh, and what an incredibly, remarkably stupid and dangerous idea, arming the teacher. Let me tell you something. My teachers, when I was in school, had guns. My Spanish teacher would have shot me at least 15 times. <laughs> I would not be here tonight. And this garbage about the armed security guards. In, in Uvalde, the school district had its own police force. It doesn't make a difference, but of course, these people keep forgetting to mention that. If even 5% of teachers, people that are skilled with arms, we want that, 5% were voluntarily armed and trained to stop active shooters, we would achieve effective deterrence and the problem would cease to exist. Said the man who told us COVID would be gone by Easter 2020. <laughs> and the solution, I guess, is give everybody a gun. Maybe we should give the kids guns too, pack them in their lunchbox. <laughs> you know, if everyone has a gun, no one has a gun, right? <laughs> Kindergarten cop also treated the NRA holes to one of his classic riffs on how you can't use the N word. I believe it's the most dangerous time in the history of our country because of the power of weaponry, and I'm not talking about rifles now. You know what I'm talking about. The N-word. Can't use the N-word. Two N-words you can't use. You can't use the, the nuclear word. He loves this N-word thing. He's, when he orders food at a Mexican restaurant, he's like, I'll have the N-word. They're like, huh? He's like, nachos. <laughs> Can you say that? It's, but. Back to the guns. The reason we need guns is because there are criminals out there running around with super strength. When you see these gangs of hundreds of young, usually young people, go and attack an apartment store, a department store in San Francisco and Los Angeles and Chicago, and they run in by the hundreds and they're running out carrying refrigerators and carrying <laughs> air conditioners and big stuff, big little everything. Fur coats, non-fur coats, everything to carry. <laughs> fur coats? Who's running out of a store carrying a 500-pound refrigerator and wearing a fur coat? I mean, some kind, of, some kind of super pimp or something? None of it makes any sense. None of it. But they love him. They love him so much. Trump yammered at full speed for about an hour, and so we slowed him down to half speed for the return of drunk Donald Trump. The only one they want to prosecute is Donald Trump. Let's get it, Trump. Let's get that son of a bitch. Let's get him. Took half a bottle of tequila, but I finally agree. Before Trump got up to speak, his old number two, Mike Pence, took the stage. I'm guessing they didn't share a trailer, but Mike Pence was there to, to fire things up and really rock their glocks off. Thank you for the honor of serving as your vice president. It was the greatest honor of my life. Well, you know, at least no one tried to hang him this time. That's progress, right? Pence says he will likely announce whether or not he'll run for president 
in May. He wants to wait. I guess he wants to wait until after Coachella to get the ayahuasca out of his system. But <laughs> why would he run for president? He might as well announce he's running for wide receiver for the Colts. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the Democrat side, Joe Biden is suddenly fielding a primary challenge from another prominent Joe. So what would you tell the American people? What is your message? Why, why are you the guy? What's your message for, for the people you know, out there? You know, you know what? The, the American people, get on my website, joeexotic2024.com. I answer every American person that has a question. My platform's on there. My views are on there. This call is from a federal prison. Joe Exotic, uh, the, the Tiger King uh, from federal prison. Sir, thanks so much for joining the program again. <laughs> Wow, it'd be fun to have both the Democratic and Republican candidates running from federal prison. Wow. Well, and then we got the pillow man, Mike Lindell, who uh, is facing his own billion-dollar-plus lawsuit from Dominion, but he's focused on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. You want to you save your career, Ron? Just endorse Donald Trump tomorrow morning. It's, you're disgusting what you're doing down there. What I just talked about tonight, when we talk about defamation, and you're colluding <laughs> with Dominion, with their lawyers to make it easier to sue people for defamation. Defamation is when your mustache catches fire and they have to put it out. It's... And you know, if he loses the defamation case, he'll probably go bankrupt. So <laughs> there's a lot of defamation going on over at Newsmax right now. There's, thank you for that. I appreciate it. There is serious concern at Newsmax, not just about the future of our country. At Newsmax, they are worried about the future of the human race. The increase among Americans that identify as LGBTQ has been staggering in recent years. We are already having a population crisis in this world. We're not gonna have enough people to feed everyone. And who's gonna take care of all the old people we have? How are we going to survive once the left turns everybody in this country gay? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. I guess maybe we'll have a lot of brunch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's so much fear about sexuality and gender and wokeness. Most of these people don't even know what woke means. It's just a word that gives Tucker Carlson a rage boner every night when he goes to sleep. But <laughs> it's gotten so bad that a conservative nonprofit group is launching a text alert system to notify users when a company goes woke. I guess they're still not over the green M&Ms yet. And the way it works is you submit your phone number to this woke alerts website, and then whenever a company like Budweiser hires a spokesperson you can't identify with, every jitterbug phone and every Waffle House in America goes off all at once. <laughs> and while some companies are trying to be more inclusive, others are intentionally now doing the opposite. Are you tired of woke brands cramming their liberal agendas down your throat? Then cram these down instead. Mr. Paul's Cisgender Fish Sticks, the antidote to the left-wing corporations who want to tell you how to think. Wait, what's in these? We start with 100% fresh Atlantic cod, then our team of marine psychologists. Did you say marine psychologists? Quiet, cook. Then our team of marine psychologists make sure each and every delicious, unsustainably caught cod identifies as his or her confirmed biological gender, just as Jesus tweeted. I don't think fish can be trans. Not in this box they can't. That's not what I meant. Mr. Paul's cisgender fish sticks, assigned delicious at birth. I think it's a boy. Yeah, taste the penis, Mr. Paul.